Welcome to Conversations with Marlon Bolton, the podcast. On Conversations, we exchange thoughts and ideas with people from different experiences and backgrounds, which help shape a better quality of life for our residents. These conversations bring fresh perspectives that foster our city's growth and resilience. Our conversation starts right now. Welcome to Conversations. My name is Marlon Bolton, your Tamarack District 1 City Commissioner. And today we have Gretchen Cassini. And Gretchen is the Mobility Advancement Program Administrator for MAP Broward under Broward County. Welcome to my chair, Ms. Cassini. Thank you so much for inviting me and for having me. This is such a great opportunity. Awesome, awesome. Ms. Cassini, tell me just a little bit more about yourself, how you got to to Matt Broward. Well, it was a long and winding road. I have a public policy background. Uh, I worked in the legislature at the state level, and I was also a research professor. I focused a lot on criminal justice and civil rights, did some international work, and I found my way into the world of grants. And the world of grants opens up a lot of doors if you're a good grant writer and you can access funding. Um, So I found my way into a lot of other positions, including coming down here to Broward County to become a grant writer. And uh, then I started working in governmental relations and I got assigned the special project of working on a transportation surtax back in 2015. Nice. Uh, You know, we weren't successful in the 2016 effort. But we were in the 2018 effort, and so here I am. I remember that. I remember that. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, so to speak, tell me just a fun fact about yourself. Somebody, something that nobody knows about Gretchen Cassini. Okay. Well, um, nobody nobody knows. Well, a lot of people know that I'm an animal lover, and Mm -hmm. that I've always loved animals, rescued animals since before I could even talk. But um, very few people know that my very favorite animal is a sea turtle and that I actually finally got to swim with sea turtles in January of 2017. And it was a lifelong dream of mine. So I was very excited to do that. Wow. Wow. That is exciting. I would love to do that one day. I hope you get to. But I can't swim. (gasps) (laughs) Well, you can I'm, ride on their you can ride on their shells. I, 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 I love the water. I love animals. I I love, you know, water creatures, so to speak. But I just can't swim. <laughs> so so there in South Florida, yeah. there's something for you to aspire to. I, there you I, go. I, I will. I will. Uh, you talked about the success at the ballot box for the penny tax surtax. What are the program goals? So, when we went out to the voters, we listened to what they were saying was really the most important things to them. And I'm sure you recognize here in the city of Tamarack that congestion is a big problem, right? And all over the country. So, traffic system management, which is basically the same as congestion relief, is one of our major goals. And then creating connectivity, And there are a lot of different ways that you can define that or look at that, including um, adding sidewalks or um, roads where they don't exist now, but also trying to create connectivity across communities. You know, the residents of Broward County don't see the 31 distinct municipalities. You know, they don't understand the difference between the county and the city and the state roads. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just all one big grid. And so trying to better create that connectivity is super important to the program. Also, I'm sure you've heard about connected vehicle infrastructure, smart cities, smart county, um, really creating connectivity in the way that our infrastructure uh, talks to our transportation infrastructure. So our built environment, um, communicating with vehicles, Potentially being able to have people just aim their mobile devices at a transit shelter and the route shows up and when the next bus is coming and, you know, I want to get wait here and how do I do that? Those are the types of connected um, goals that we're really thinking about. Obviously, transit service is a huge 
emphasis in this plan. Right now, only about 2 to 3 percent of all of the people that live in Broward County or come here to visit as tourists are utilizing our public transportation system. Mm -hmm. And we know we cannot build our way out of congestion. We're not going to be, be able to continue expanding roads. And this is a built-out community. We need to get people out of their cars and onto um, public transportation if we really want to try to start solving congestion. And plus, it's just a great quality of life because mm -hmm. you don't have the stress of driving and you have free Wi-Fi and you can download our books. I don't know if you knew that, but on our, our buses, you can download books and music from our library for wow. free. Um, so it's a, it's a really great component of this community in this region that we're really hoping we can get more people to utilize it, especially now with gas prices so high. Um, we really want to look at multimodal options. So it's a beautiful place to live. Uh, lots of people wish that they could do more walking and maybe bicycling, not just for recreation, but to you know get from point A to point B. And it's hot and it's rainy and looking at ways to help people uh, just enjoy this environment. I mean, there, we don't have snow. You can, you could walk and bike most of the time here. You just need to have better, safer facilities. Mm -hmm. um, so we really want to do that. And then last but not least, economic development and yeah. benefits. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm most proud of is that the county commission had the foresight to say, even before the pandemic, we really need to stimulate our local economy with this sales tax it can be looked at as a regressive tax. We want the people who live here and work here and spend their money here to get a lot back from it. And we have like 80% of our businesses here are small businesses. So the county commission said, we're going to make sure that 30% of all of these sales tax revenues stay local. Mm -hmm. And we call it the 30 for 30 goal. So over the 30 year program, we want 30% of all of the revenues to go back into our local businesses. Wow. Very impressive. I know that a lot of Tamarack residents are listening and they are wondering how that money has come back to the city of Tamarack. So what progress or projects have occurred in Tamarack due to the surtax? Great question. Always what's in it for me, right? Exactly. Absolutely. So, um, I'm glad you asked. There's a really big intersection project that maybe some of the Tamarack residents who are listening are familiar with, and it's um, the Knob Hill and Southgate. Major intersection improvement. Um, if you're interested, we actually have a really extensive drone video that shows the before and after. Mm -hmm. There's additional turn lanes. There's new mast arms, which is really what we do in order to create a resilient um, traffic signal. It's just getting rid of span wire. And there's a $1.277 million of investment just in that intersection alone. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, several other projects that are underway. There's actually, I brought with me, I just got it today and I thought it was so uh, interesting. There's a project that's starting on April 25th. Uh, it's a county project and it's laying fiber um, mm -hmm. on McNabb. Nice. All the way from um, 441 out to Pine Island. Yes. And one of the reasons why that's so important is you can't have connected vehicle technology and um, adaptive signal control without those types of uh, transportation fiber optics in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some of the big projects. You just started a project, City of Tamarack, just yeah. started a project in February um, and for $530,000, uh, just got underway last month. And that is a traffic calming project that I know is a real high priority for your city. Yeah. And so just kind of give you a sense, a flavor of um, just projects within the municipal boundaries of Tamarack between 2019, when the surtax actually started being collected, through 2026, which is the end of our current five-year plan, we have $108 million worth of investments planned, and that doesn't include transit investments. Wow. Yeah. What surtax projects can we expect next? Well, thanks for asking, because <laughs> I kind of teed myself up for that one. Mm -hmm. So, transit service. I want to get back to the public transportation. Our Broward County Transit Department is almost completed with a what they're calling the PRIMO study. 
they brought in a consultant team, kind of globally recognized consultant team, to look at every aspect of our transit system, uh, both just our normal fixed route buses, but also premium service, which we call bus rapid transit, express mm -hmm. service. But primarily, we really want to expand into rail, light rail, um, looking at commuter rail as well. And so one of the big things that I think you're going to be seeing on the horizon over the next couple of years is a commitment to take some of these corridors, these really high ridership corridors, um, to the next step to go after federal funding. One of the things that made this sales tax so valuable to this community why they were willing to invest their own sales tax dollars is because we're a donor county mm -hmm. in a donor state, mm -hmm. which means that our taxes are going to other places all over the country for their projects because we never had the local dedicated source of revenue to be able to really be competitive. Right. And we've got this Infrastructure and Jobs Act, and now we have this local dedicated source of revenue that will really make us rise to the top and be competitive. So it, now is the time to make some major investments in some significant transit projects that I hope will be a legacy for this community. Right. How could the surtax also benefit our hyper-local economy? Well, this goes back to the whole 30 for 30 and the, um, trying to make sure that our local businesses have an opportunity to participate in the program. We've actually, um, I'm not sure if you know Sandy Michael McDonald, our Director of Economic and Small Business Development. Yes. He has put so much effort into educating local small business, but, but not just inside of Broward County, but even in the region. Um, during the pandemic, a lot of businesses were struggling. They were, you know, looking for ways to kind of recreate themselves and pivot. Um, and his office has been really ha holding hands with some of these small businesses that are going, hmm, $16 billion of revenues over the next 26 years now. Mm. Maybe I should look at ways that I can position myself to get involved in this program because there are a lot of ways. We have um, right now, I think, 40% uh, goals. What that means is 40% of all of the revenues associated with the projects that are here in Tamarack um, are staying in small businesses. Mm. So I, I, I really see um, just even creating more transportation-related jobs that have good benefits, that are high wage, that, um, that offer people opportunities for advancement, it's just a really great way of looking at uh, this program as a benefit to, uh, to everyone. I agree. I agree. It is great to see all the activity that the surtax is creating in different areas, along with the coordination of the various agencies. Uh, but as we know, before progress, there is sometimes pain. What is being done to mitigate that? Well, I, first I want to ask, so are you talking about maybe construction pain or are you talking something a little bit more like relational and within our community? Relational and with, within our community. Okay. I just want to make sure I answer the right question. Um, it's going to require some growing pains for us. Um, we aren't Miami-Dade County. We don't have a legacy of uh, various types of rail. And to do those types of projects, and I've been very fortunate to be able to travel with some of my colleagues to other parts of this country and talk to the folks that have initiatives like this and what works and what doesn't work and why. And I'm sure you won't be surprised to know that um, it's really important for people to be able to communicate and collaborate well. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, you know, I went out to Denver, I went to Portland, and what I heard, and I know my colleagues heard over and over again, was there was a high level of trust among the various participants in the program. And there were things that they were able to do, you know, basically on a handshake. And I, you know, I know you've experienced this here uh, in your time as, as being a commissioner, that there isn't necessarily that type of cohesion and collaboration within this community that uh, we're working really hard to build that. We have to have 
um, the MPO and FTOT and our participating municipalities in the county um, all kind of rowing in the same direction in order for us to create what I think could be a transformational transportation system for this region. That's amazing. Ms. Gretchen Cassini, you are a rock star. Thank you so very much for stopping by. It's great to talk to you today. It was such a pleasure, truly, and uh, an honor and to be able to talk to your constituents. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Come again. My name is Marlon Bolton. This has been Conversations. There is a famous quote by Martin Luther King, and he says, If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you cannot walk, then crawl. But whatever you do... You have to keep on moving. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to Conversations with Marlon Bolton. Brought to you by the City of Tamarack, Office of Commissioner Marlon Bolton. <laughs>